start with the beginning of your career, if that is okay. I found it very interesting. It was a long time ago. No, <laughs> a few minutes back. <laughs> But um, when I read about your um, path after Paris, you went to Greece. So could you tell us what it is like to be a young executive in a foreign land where you do not speak the language and possibly everyone is a little more mature than you? Yeah, in fact, it's, uh, I'm sorry for the L'Oreal guys because they know the story. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, at L'Oreal, it's a kind of legend. So, uh, but, uh, so sorry, guys. Uh, no, in fact, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting story because it's, pretty, it's quite typical of, uh, of what can happen at L'Oreal. You know, I, I joined L'Oreal uh, when I was uh, 20, uh, 21 years old after school, and I started as a salesman, and I did uh, one year and a half marketing, and one day I was called by the, uh, the, top, uh, the top VP uh, HR, human resource uh, at L'Oreal, you know, at the top floor of, uh, of Clichy, uh, Top executive floor, big, uh, big carpet, uh, no noise. <laughs> so I, I was really impressed, especially because at that time I was a bit turbulent uh, as a young guy. And I said, my God, what did I do? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're going to fire me or something. And uh, so I went there, and the guy was very uh, nice. And he said, uh, he said Monsieur Agon, um, we want to send you as a general manager of Greece. Wow. I said, my God, that's, that's, uh, that's a miracle, you know. Uh, and of course, I said immediately, I said, yes, of course. Uh, when can I leave? Uh, when can I <laughs> take my ticket and go? And uh, so we discussed 10 minutes, and, I, and then uh, I remember, I can see still the, this, this vision right after the, the appointment. I went to a, a bookstore, because at that time uh, there was no internet or whatever, and I, I bought the, you know, the uh, books to learn Greek, uh, and I was starting to learn Greek the, the same night. So I went to Greece, and in fact, what I discovered, of course, was that uh, you know, it was not the big subsidiary or the big business. It was a very tiny business, uh, almost bankrupt, uh, <laughs> in a catastrophic situation. <laughs> but the worst of all is that I learned after that, in fact, they had proposed a job to t 10 other people <laughs> at L'Oreal. <laughs> And no one <laughs> wanted to take it, of course. <laughs> of course, because you know, it, was, it was a kind of suicide mission. You know? <laughs> Anyone knowing anything about this company would have never taken the, the job. But I didn't know, so I went there. Mm -hmm. I went there, and, uh, and in fact, I fell in love with Greece. And I'm still in love with Greece. You know, I have a house in Greece. I spend my vacation in Greece. Uh, because I, I fell in love, uh, and, and maybe I fell in love with Greece because, uh, you know, it, it, it was very, it was really something special. You know, I could feel when I arrived there that, you know, I could, uh, I could feel the music, I could feel the light, I could feel the, the language. It was very something special. Mm. And, uh, and in fact, maybe it's because my name is a Greek name. Uh, Agon, you Agon? Know, comes from, uh, in fact, the, uh, the first Olympic Games uh, 3,000 years ago. Uh, were uh, called the Olympiakes Agones, so the uh, uh, it was it means fight, uh, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it would not surprise <laughs> <laughs> my dear friends, <laughs> uh, Cyril. <Good. laughs> and so, uh, so I felt home uh, uh, in Greece. And when so <laughs> the last part of the story is that when I I met for the first time the the, the sales team, it was not a big sales team. It was I don't know 30 people. But it, it was my first time, and the person I was replacing, I was re really shocked because he was, he was French, he had been in Greece for seven years, and after seven years, he still didn't speak Greek. And he, he was speaking to the people in French, and there was someone tr translating, and I was really shocked. You know, I was 25, very romantic, uh, et cetera. So I, the, the next meeting, when he left, I, uh, I learned uh, a text in Greek, and I said, you know, dear, uh, dear fellow uh, Greeks, uh, employees of L'Oréal, I, I love this country, I love Greece, and I swear that I will learn Greek within one year. Oh. And I swear that if w within one year I don't speak Greek fluently, I'll go back to Paris. You know, when you're 25, you say you this say kind of things. You say a lot of things. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I would st still say the same today. But, <laughs> but anyway, so I had said it. And after that, you know, I had a huge pressure yeah. because, of course, I had to, I had to do it. I could not uh, 
go back. And so day after day after day, you know, I was trying, I was learning, I was, and it, it's very difficult Greek. Uh, because it's, it's Greek not like to me, anything. Helpful. It's all <laughs> Greek to you, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and in fact, it came. I remember it came after a few months, and then I, I learned very well. I spoke Greek, and I spoke really fluently. And because my name was Greek, uh, after two years, everyone uh, took me for a Greek. And uh, when I was visiting uh, customers uh, uh, everywhere, stores, salons, pharmacies, uh, perfumeries, etc., every time it was uh, always the same, uh, the same, uh, the same joke, you know. Uh, because the first question of a Greek when you when they meet each other is uh, where do you come from, Apopoulos, and I said from Montmartre, and so the guy said Montmartre, where is Montmartre? Montmartre is in Paris. Okay, so it was the start of the conversation, and it helped me a lot. So it was a great, uh, I have to say that these four years in Greece were absolutely amazing. And the last part, if I may, is that uh, it, it was, uh, you know, I became so Greek, because, you know, when <laughs> I do something, I do it really intensely. Uh, I became so Greek that I took all the Greek, uh, how do you say, uh, you know, tricks or, or whatever, and uh, after four years, when the people of L'Oréal saw me mm -hmm. becoming so Greek, the, the people in Paris said, okay, we have to bring him back. <laughs> we're going to lose him forever. Wow. We didn't know you were so funny, Jean-Paul. <laughs> I'm not if funny, I'm, I'm, I'm just intense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, well. Um, the other question I wanted to ask you next, which you mentioned in the intro a bit, was um, it was a very, very intense time when you came to the United yeah. States of America. To come here at the 9-11 is rather dramatic. It's never business as usual in the US, but that was um, a world and life-changing experience. So um, with all of that as a dramatic entry, when you think of the years that you did spend here, and um, we're very interested to know what is your perception? What did you learn? about the American consumer while you lived in the USA? Oh, I learned a lot. Uh, you know, I had, a, I had this great opportunity uh, before I took over from uh, Guy Perlong uh, to, uh, to have uh, six months to visit uh, America. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the way we, we do sometimes at L'Oreal. So I was sent here, and for six months, I visited 500 stores. Uh, across America, you know, and everywhere, Florida, Texas, mm -hmm. California, Chicago, everywhere. So I really, the, the first thing I, I really learned was about retail. You know, I knew pretty well all, all retailers, all type of stores, and, and when you spend your days, of course, you, you know gotta very watch well out for retailers. in the retail stores, mm -hmm. you, you also <laughs> understand consumers. Yeah. So, no, I think that uh, I learned, uh, I learned pretty, uh, pretty well uh, the American consumers. I think that the American consumers are obviously uh, among the most uh, expert and discerning consumers in the world. Uh, and that's why uh, competition here is so, uh, so fierce, because to, to, to be able to convince a consumer to switch from the brand they use to the brand you want them to use uh, is always uh, something very, uh, very sporty. But uh, no, it was, a, it was a great, great experience. But I have to say that I learned even more from, uh, from my competitors. Uh, you know, of mm. all the countries where I've, I've worked, I think that really in America, where uh, you know, the, the competition is so, uh, so fierce and at the same time so uh, healthy, I would say. Because it's, it's, uh, it's especially in this industry, because I think that uh, this industry, we all know, it's about innovation, it's about new idea, it's about creation, especially in the fragrance world. So uh, the more competition there is, the better you get. And, uh, and that was really a, a great experience. So how do you man manage L'Oreal's traditions in a worldwide culture with so much diversity? How is the culture? How would you describe the culture of L'Oreal? Oh, the culture of L'Oreal, I would say it's, uh, we, it's basically f fundamentally uh, entrepreneurial. Uh, we, we want to keep it entrepreneurial. You know, we, again, it's linked to this uh, family um, history. Uh, we, we want to be a, a large company, but with uh, the spirit of a, of a small one, a, a, a leader with the spirit of a, of a challenger. And we, we want to keep the, the, 
the culture of the company, uh, very entrepreneurial, very human. Uh, you know, for example, at L'Oreal, everything is based on the people. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, you know, you have two, generally speaking, you have two ways to organize a company. Either you believe first and foremost in uh, organization, processes, structures, everything. And then the people adapt to, the, to that, or you believe first and foremost in people, mm -hmm. and in a way you have to organize, the, uh, to adapt the organization to the people. Definitely L'Oreal is in the second category. That's why, mm -hmm. by the way, L'Oreal is a, often seen as an uh, organized chaos, uh, which, <laughs> is, uh, which is okay, because at the end of the day, uh, the most important thing is, again, to, to have this capacity to be an entrepreneur, uh, to take risks, to take bets, to go for it, uh, to, to empower people to do what they want to do, this, what they think they should do. So this is the, this is the spirit. And so so the what did sailing teach you about the beauty biz? What's the well, connection? Well, sailing teach, uh, uh, says a lot. You know, it, uh, it, uh, it teaches you a lot. Uh, in term, I think that instinctively I could, I could spend the night on this. So maybe go right ahead. Uh, We're here. Should, <laughs> no, it, it teaches you a lot, you know, especially uh, regatta. When you do regatta, uh, it teaches you a lot. Uh, you know, uh, for example, the very simple thing, sorry, maybe it uh, sounds banal and stupid, but, you know, for example, if you want to win a regatta, and we were discussing that this week with the teams, if you want to win a, a regatta, even if you have the best boat, the best team, you know what you need? What? Wind. And, ah. uh, and so the first thing that you have to do when you want to win a regatta is to try to understand where is the wind and position yourself on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the sea where the wind will be or is. And if you do that, even if your boat is not the best or your team not the best, you're going to win the regatta. So it's the same for business. So you have to see where the wind is. Mm -hmm. Wind meaning growing segments. You know, if you, if you are uh, with a brand on a segment of the market that is not where there is no wind, you can do whatever you want, uh, you will not grow. If you position yourself mm -hmm. uh, smartly on the, what I call the ascending trend, uh, you know, immediately uh, you will see a, a fantastic growth. So that's just one example, but there are, there are hundreds like that. I mean, in, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, selling is a, is a great uh, is a great lesson for for business. So, is there is the wind blowing in a direction that is bringing in something new to you? In fact, we are. You know, it's the other way around. You you have to move Grab your business the where the wind is, uh, and that's what we are doing. That's what we are doing with our brand. You know, we and it's and it's obvious. You know, if you if you look at uh, if you look, for example, in our portfolio, I would not judge, of course. Uh, my uh, respected competitors, but uh, if, you, if we look at our portfolio of brands, the brands that are on the part of uh, the water where there is wind, they are going very nicely, and those who are not, they have difficulty. So the, our job, and my job especially, is to try to uh, tell people, you know, guys, let's go there. There is wind there. And, uh, and, and to move our brands and our initiatives and our new products and our uh, uh, innovations on, on that front. And, and when, when you have wind, it's much easier. It's philosophical, but it makes a no, lot of simple. sense. A <laughs> lot of sense. <laughs> Common sense. Let's go. You just mentioned the uh, family spirit, and there is also the, the startup spirit that uh, uh, so many uh, companies praise to. Um, and, and that doesn't mean they, they have it. So how do you ensure that L'Oréal um, has this, uh, this startup spirit with uh, more than uh, 89,000 employees, uh, 34 brands. Uh. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point too. Uh, you know, I think it, uh, it's very related to the specific organization of L'Oreal. L'Oreal uh, is a big company, of course. It's, uh, you know, 26 billion euros, uh, 80,000 people. But it's not organized, if I, if, if I may use the, the comparison, it's not a big boat. It's a flotilla of small, medium, or uh, bigger boats. And, uh, and in fact, it's made of uh, uh, 30 brands, uh, four divisions, uh, 70 subsidiaries around the world. And each, uh, each uh, uh, general manager of a, a brand or a division in a country is the, is the captain of its boat. 
And so this, this organization is, is, helps really people to, to, to have this ownership and to really, uh, to really think like an entrepreneur. You know, the, the entrepreneur spirit for us is very important. And the other uh, characteristic also is that uh, L'Oréal is not at all uh, a, a company really processed, really well organized. You know, if, if you, for example, I hope that some of you in the room uh, will want one day to join L'Oréal. But uh, you have to know that if you want to join a very well organized and processed company, don't come to L'Oréal. Uh, what I, I call L'Oréal an organized chaos. Uh, it's really chaotic. Uh, it's really uh, very difficult to describe. Uh, organigrams don't exist. Uh, organization charts are changing all the time. Uh, and, um, and for many, many years, our competitors looked at us uh, with contempt and s saying, you know, this, this franchise or this, this uh, family company, uh, they are completely uh, crazy. But in fact, now, uh, with uh, the evolution of digital, with this new spirit, the new uh, startup spirit, the new entrepreneur spirit, which is really the, the name of the game, in fact, our uh, organized chaos becomes probably the, the model to follow. So that's very typical to us. It's very linked to the culture of the company. But let's, let's say it's worked. it works pretty well. And now most of your offices are being converted into uh, open spaces um, and uh, following this, uh, this startup trend. So uh, how do you view this reverse culture affecting performance in a, in a traditional uh, corporate structure? I mean, your open spaces, what does it change in fact? Uh, you mean in the offices? Yes. Oh, you know, that, that's a small change. It's just an evolution of the, of the way people work together. Uh, we, are, we are also making a big change uh, Within the company right now, we have a, pr a program that we call the Simplicity, uh, that uh, that has the uh, the objective to make sure that everyone uh, works th that they work together in a very uh, collaborative, uh, cooperative way, uh, which is uh, I think also the, the key the key words for today. So this is one element, but the, I would say that the most important element is that. I'm, I'm really trying uh, my best to make sure that uh, L'Oréal is a, is a big company with the spirit of a challenger, of a, of, a, of a startup, or a leader with the spirit of a, of a challenger. I think it's very important, very important to stay very close uh, to, the, to the field, to the uh, opportunities, uh, and, and surely not to behave like a, a big monster.